Home from school comes young Johnny Johnston, who doesn't know about reheating cooked foods. In any case, he is hungry and in a hurry. His mother is out, and waiting for the family tea would mean hanging about for at least an hour. So infuse the tea, reheat the stew, cut half a dozen slices of bread, throw in a couple of buns, and bob your uncle. But Bob is not your uncle, nor any other kind of relative. That pot of stew could be dangerous, as dangerous as a stick of dynamite in the hands of a child. Stop. What? Me? Yes, you. Put that piece of meat back in the pot. Ha ha ha. I'm hungry and I'm in a hurry. At once. And have a look, young fellow, my lad, at what could happen to the meat in that pot when you reheat it. And by the way, never taste and put the spoon back in the pot. The temperature is that of a hot summer's day, when the rapid growth of bacteria takes place. The temperature is now at boiling point. This is sufficient heat, otherwise the food value will be destroyed. Only when the stew is sizzling hot can you be sure that Jimmy Germ and all his cronies have been killed off and that the reheated stew is safe to eat. Remember this point then, for it is all important. Reheated food is safe to eat only when it has been brought through the boil. In this clean, bright, up-to-date shop, Everything is protected one way or another from contamination. Food should be displayed in glass cases. And assistants can help in a clean food campaign by using the proper implements for the job. Meat should be touched by hand as little as possible, both when being cut and when being wrapped up for the customer. All that is necessary for sound food hygiene is a little care together with the intelligent use of the proper handling implements. Paper can be an excellent form of protection, and tongs are an effective means of handling cakes. In the home, all cooked and uncooked meat and fish should be kept covered. Place it in a larder or safe, or in a cool, well-ventilated room. In a shop, food should be stored overnight in a refrigerator. In this way, it keeps fresh and wholesome and is protected from dust and flies and insects. Cleanliness of knives, forks and spoons and plates and cups is just as essential in the home as in a restaurant or canteen. Washing up should always be done as thoroughly as the facilities allow. Plenty of hot water, which should be changed frequently, and sufficient detergent should be used. The ideal method of drying dishes is to let them drain, but if dish towels are used, they must be changed frequently. Nowadays, hot water is available to almost anyone. One thing that must not be done is to mix dishes which animals have used with dishes the family have used, and to wash them in the same water. If you keep a cat or a dog in your home, you must have a separate bowl for it. If care in washing dishes at home is needed, much more care is required in restaurants and canteens. 
Properly run restaurants have two sinks. One is for washing and contains a detergent. The other is for rinsing and sterilizing in very hot water. Dishes are normally removed in a basket, not by hand. In restaurants and canteens, there's a variety of other utensils to be washed. Pots and pans and all the other kitchen equipment needed for preparing and serving food. In restaurants and canteen kitchens, as in shops, tables like this one should be cleaned every night with a sterilizing solution. Where a chopper has cut deep into the wood, only a sterilizer can seep in and kill any germs that may lurk there. It is the duty of everyone who prepares or serves or handles food in any way to follow a simple code of rules. By following these rules, every man and woman, boy and girl, will help to make life flow much more smoothly and much more safely. <laughs>